having another lesson for you today, and we're actually in the third through fifth grade room. If you come at the 9.30 hour, if you come at the 11 o'clock hour, it's the third and fourth grade room. If you remember your teachers, uh, Miss Mary Coleman is actually that uh, first hour teacher, and uh, then we have uh, Dr. John Shookman is the second hour, and Dr. Mark as well, Montgomery, and his wife Becky are your teachers. And uh, uh, they're looking forward to be back in the classroom with you soon, and we all are. So we hope you're back here as soon as we can make that happen. The, uh, but I want to talk to you today a little bit about something as well and give you that challenge for the week. Your challenge this week is to be a good neighbor. And what that means is, is that uh, you need to go and maybe talk to your neighbor um, over the fence or give them a call or help them out in some way. So. Um, uh, you can help them out, maybe if they're elderly and they need somebody to go to the grocery store, your parents could go to the store for them and you could help them that way, or uh, just go pick up some sticks in the yard or something like that. So be a good neighbor in some way this week is your challenge. And I want to talk to you for the Bible story today, though, about adventures. And if you've ever been on an adventure in your life before, our special journey, and I've been on lots of adventures and journeys, I've actually been to 49 states. That's a lot of states. I bet you can't guess the last state I have to go to. Well, I'll tell you. It's actually, oh, it's actually Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii. don't know when I'm going to go or if I'm going to go, but uh, that's the last one I have to go to. So. But I've been to lots of other states before. Just recently, uh, my wife and I went to North Carolina, and uh, we went to what's called the Blue Ridge Parkway in a place called Mount Mitchell. And that's a beautiful place in the mountains in North Carolina. In South Dakota, just this last winter, I love to fish. And one of the things I could do is ice fish. To do that, you can actually drive out on the ice with a car or vehicle when the ice gets thick enough. And uh, this picture you see now is us actually getting stuck on a lake in South Dakota and trying to get out. And we didn't have a shovel, but we had a big old two by four. And we dug out the wheel two by four and stuck the chains on it. We finally got out. I'm here, right? So we got out. And uh, that was an adventure, though. It was lots of fun. Uh, to do that. I don't mind getting stuck, um, uh, but uh, as long as you can get out, uh, you're good. Also, I remember when I was younger, a teenager, um, uh, I uh, took a little adventure, and uh, I went to a place called the Sawtooth Wilderness Area, and that's in Idaho, actually, and I backpacked in. It's a wilderness area, and uh, so you bring all your food in, all that sort of stuff, but I love doing that um, and going out and just seeing all the different animals that are around, the birds, they're singing, you listen to them or you see them, or the different animals that you see. Uh, you see squirrels and chipmunks, all kinds of things. Like one of the things we saw was a marmot, and uh, it's actually a big, fat cat-looking thing, I guess you could call it. And, uh, but they are a really neat, furry animal um, uh, that uh, live up in the mountains. But you can find all kinds of stuff up in the mountains as well. And uh, one of my trips up in the mountains, we were going to, we didn't bring enough food for us because we we're going to catch fish. And the problem was we didn't catch enough fish, so we almost starved to death. So we had to pick berries like the bears. And uh, so I've been on lots of adventures in my life. This story today is about a special adventure as well. And it's actually an adventure with God, and it's about two people, uh, Paul, and si Paul and Barnabas. And it's actually the first missionary journey ever taken. And it's actually found in uh, Acts 13. So if you have your Bibles, go to Acts 13. We're going to be reading some of these verses, not all of them. But uh, Paul uh, and Barnabas were, were in a place called Antioch. And they were hanging out with church people and they were having church together. It talks in verse 1. And verse 2 says this, And while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So they've been sitting around, and uh, it says that they've been fasting. Fasting just means that they're not eating, actually. And people fast as Christians or followers of Christ because if you don't eat at that time, what they say is you should be praying or focusing on God, what he wants you to do in your life and that's what they were doing here as well and so they were praying about what God wanted them uh, to do and the whole church actually uh, thought and believed that Paul and Barnabas were going to be were called to go somewhere and be a missionary that's what a missionary is isn't it that God calls you to a certain place 
not necessarily your place where you're at, but sends you out to tell people about Jesus and see if they'll receive him as their savior. You know, I love this story because it has lots of adventures in it. The Holy Spirit is talking to them. Here in a minute, you're going to find out there's a villain in this story, so listen for the villain, okay? And then there's some people mad and angry and all kinds of stuff. So they were all together in that room, and they were praying, and they said, God, the Holy Spirit is leading them to go to be a missionary. It says, then when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them, and they sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Cilicia. From there they sailed to Cyprus, which was actually an island. And then they, when they reached Salamis, they began to proclaim the word of the God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as a helper with them. So the Holy Spirit was actually, we talked about the Holy Spirit last week. Miss Bridget did, right? The helper from God, the Holy Spirit. One of the things he can do is he can tell you what he wants you to do and where he wants you to go. So they didn't know where they were going, but they prayed to God, and the Holy Spirit gave them this inner sense within that they needed to go to this place to preach the gospel. And so the church actually set them apart, it says, or they laid their hands on them. We do that today as well a little bit. Um, uh, when we have somebody going out as a missionary from our church, we'll come, have them come up front. We'll lay our hands on them, and we'll pray for them and ask God to help them uh, along the way. And God is there, and God will help them along the way, and we believe that. So we still do that, don't we, um, uh, in our churches today. And it says that they had traveled, and they'd reached a place called Salamis, and they began to proclaim the uh, word of God. In other words, they, used to, they began to tell about Jesus. That's what missionaries do. They, tell people, they go, and they tell people about Jesus. That's the adventure that they take. An adventure with God that is incredible uh, for them and anybody who would be doing that as well. And then it says, when they had gone through the whole island, this was actually an island, Cyprus was, as far as Pappas, they found a magician, a Jewish false prophet whose name was Bar-Jesus. Uh-oh, trouble's brewing here. This is the villain, okay, in uh, this uh, passage of scripture. And uh, his name is Bar-Jesus. What's interesting is that actually means the son of Jesus. Hmm. The son of Jesus is not a good guy. That's kind of weird, isn't it? And it says as well, um, uh, uh, later on in this passage, that he was a magician. So listen, who, who was with the proconsul? Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence. This man summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of the Lord. But Ilamus, the magician, that's actually Bar-Jesus. That's his stage name. Okay? That's his state. Have you ever, I don't know if you ever heard of Houdini or something like that. Houdini is one of the most famous magicians of all times, but that was his stage name. His actual name was Eric Weiss. And he was famous for people putting handcuffs on him, and he would get out of them. He, he challenged people all over the world, police stations all over the world, to get those hands. He said, you put that on me, I can get out. So he was a magician, and uh, Illamus was a magician. Bar-Jesus was. Well, Paul and Barnabas, they were talking to this proconsul. Proconsul was actually kind of like a governor. And so they went to a very influential person and they talked to him about Jesus. Well, Elymas, uh, he didn't want the proconsul to believe in Jesus. So that's kind of interesting, isn't it? So he tried to get the proconsul not to believe in Jesus. In fact, he said he was, a, he was opposing them and seeking to turn the pro-council away from the faith. He didn't want him to uh, know Jesus in his life. But something happens here, so listen to this. It says that Paul, who was also known, but Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, remember the Holy Spirit leads us, fixed his gaze on him. So I used to call that the evil eye. My mom in church <laughs> would give us the evil eye. One time we were up in a balcony in the church, in a little church we were in, and uh, we like to make airplanes. And so we'd kind of shuffle those airplanes back and forth with us. But one time an airplane got away and it went all the way down in the congregation. That was not a good thing. My mom saw us and she turned around and she gave us what we called the evil. We were doing the evil. <laughs> she had the eye, okay? <laughs> and uh, we didn't get to sit up in the balcony for a long time after that. But you gotta think about that, okay? So he says he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he fixed his gaze on him. He looked him straight in the eye. 
And he said some things to him. You are full of deceit and fraud, you son of the devil. Wow. <laughs> I actually have never been called the son of the devil, but that's not a good thing. Okay, It's not a good thing. It says, you enemy of all righteousness. And he says, now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and not see the sun for a time. And guess what? That actually happened. It was actually a miracle. Uh, Paul actually asked God to blind him because he was what he was doing against God. And sure enough, he was blinded for a time. And then verse 12 says, Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had happened, being amazed at the teaching of the Lord. So the proconsul, I would think I would have too. He said, okay, I get it. Uh, you're from God and your message is from God. This guy got blinded. I really believe you're from God and I'm going to accept him into my life as well. So that was a pretty cool story, wasn't that? The first part of that story in Acts, where the missionaries are going out, um, uh, and they're on this great adventure with God as well. But it says then that they actually left, and they went to another place, and they arrived in a place called Pisidian Antioch. It's not the same Antioch that they left from. It's a different city. Um, uh, so they traveled to another city again, and they went to the synagogue. That's where the church was at the time, and they went and talked to the people there at the synagogue, which were the Jewish people at the time, and they asked them to preach to them. So they, they read the law from the Bible, and then they asked, could you preach to us? And Paul said, sure, I'll preach to you. And Paul had this big, long sermon, his first big sermon in the Bible that Paul preached. And he went all the back, way back in history, and he talked about the Jewish people, and he talked about when they were back in Egypt in captivity, and about how their nation grew, how they left Egypt when they were in the desert for 40 years, and how um, uh, after that they went to the land of Canaan, the land with milk and honey, the place where they were going to live. And it, he talked about how they got judges then and prophets, eventually kings. And he eventually talked about King David coming uh, in that line. And he said, and guess what? The Jesus I'm talking about actually is from the line of King David. Well, the people knew something. They knew the Old Testament, the Bible at that time. And they knew those stories that there was going to be a special king come from the line and lineage of King David. And these folks hadn't necessarily heard about the resurrection yet um, uh, that the disciples were talking about here. But guess what? They learned it here and they say, oh, I get it now. I get it. This is the Jesus that they were talking about in the Bible, our Savior. And in verse 32, it talks about, and we preach to you the good news. The good news that Jesus died on the cross for us, right? Died for our sins and rose again, and we can accept him into our life, and uh, we can have uh, go to heaven and be with God someday, but we can have God in our life all of our lives. That's the big adventure for us with God, when we start that journey with our God as well. Well, the people listened, didn't they? And they wanted him to come back, and they did come back the next week, and guess what? A whole bunch of other people came, but they weren't only Jews. There was a bunch of Gentiles or people that weren't Jewish people that didn't necessarily believe the way that Jewish people did. But they'd heard about this speaking about this Jesus, and it says this big crowd came uh, the next Sunday and when they were talking. And guess what? Some of the Jewish people got mad. They didn't want them to come to church, those Gentiles. That's kind of weird too, isn't it? So you don't want somebody to come to church and hear about Jesus? They didn't want them to come to church with them, so they got upset with them. And uh, so they told Paul and Barnabas about that, but they said, hey, we're going to tell them anyway. And the Gentiles listened, and guess what? They received Jesus as their Savior as well. And verse 48 says, when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing. They were happy and glorifying God, glorifying the word of the Lord, and as they had been appointed to, to live eternal life. And the word of the Lord was being spread through the whole region. How about that? Actually... That's what was supposed to happen and what God wanted from his missionaries. He not only wanted to go to the Jewish people, he started with them, but he wanted to go to the whole world, and it was starting to go to everybody in the whole world. By the way, most of us, we would be called Gentiles because I don't come from Jewish descent, and probably you don't either, so we'd be called a Gentile, and finally the word of God was getting out to people just like us, the Gentile people, and that's why we've heard the word of God as well, because now the word of God was going to all the people all over the world. And that's what we still want to do today. In the last verse, it says, And the disciples were continually filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. I love that because it says that they were happy. 
And the Holy Spirit was still leading and guiding them, telling them where to go, what to say, what to do. And they were spreading the word. They were going and telling about their Jesus. Now, that's an adventure with God, isn't it? Holy smokes. And they continue that adventure as well on this journey with him as missionaries. But again, guess what? We have a special adventure with God, too. We go on this great adventure with God when we receive the Savior. You never know where the Lord's going to send you uh, or what he wants you to do. Maybe some of you someday, God will tell you on the inside of this inner sense that I need to be a missionary like Paul and Barnabas. I don't know that. It might be. But if we ask God, and uh, he may send us that direction. But we can also be missionaries where we're at. We talk about that all the time. As long as, guess what? You're telling somebody about Jesus and asking them to receive them, him into their life, you are being a missionary right where you're at. And you can do that. You can do that. Just tell them what Jesus did in your life. He forgave your sins for what, by what he did for you on the cross. And they can have him as well if you believe him. So I pray for these great adventures that you're going to have with your Jesus and with your God. I'm on one. I know that many of you are on one. And I pray that it's a special adventure and it fills you with joy throughout your life. <music>